predetermined motion can be applied to objects with physical properties. This includes both forward motion and rotation. Here's a quick demonstration. Add a sphere to the scene and give it an attribute of glass. Now select the set initial motion vector to add some forward motion. This is represented by the arrow pointing out of the center of gravity. Now start the sim. See how the sphere begins to roll forward? The amount and direction of the motion can easily be changed. Click on the arrow and move it around. The farther the arrow tip is away from the object, the faster it will travel. You can also keyframe the direction of the path. Open up the Physical Simulation Properties box and shut off AutoWind. Start the simulation again and stop it after 30 or 40 frames. Adjust the direction of the arrow and start the simulation again. As we keyframe the movement and direction of the ball, this will give it an illusion of an unseen force pushing it around. One thing about the initial motion vector is that it's designed to give an object more or less a push. If you want to keep a constant forward motion, you can use the accelerated motion vector. This setting is similar to motion vector, but is represented by two arrows. The length of the arrows represents how fast the object will be traveling once it hits its top speed. The longer the arrows, the faster the object will travel. Now let's check out how to rotate an object. Let's add a cube to the scene. And we'll give it an attribute of glass. To make the cube rotate, we'll choose the initial rotation vector. And we'll start the sim. You'll notice there's an extra bar to the rotation. The first line or bar is for setting the direction of the rotation, and the second bar is for setting the rotation speed. As before, the rotation speed and direction can be keyframed. For a constant spin, we'll use the accelerated rotation vector. Again, this setting is represented by two arrows and works much in the same way as the initial rotation vector. Forward and rotation vectors can be combined, too.
And this concludes the Motion Attributes tutorial video. Next we'll be talking about the Motion Attributes Properties panel.